Okay, guys, we are live! Uh, so for those listening at home, welcome to the Dungeon Musings YouTube channel. My name is Kevin Madison, and I'll be your friendly, um, what am I going to be here? Your friendly referee, I guess, uh, because today we are carrying on with our ongoing campaign playing Mongoose Publishing's Outstanding, or is it? Wow! Traveler, second edition, uh, science fiction uh, role-playing game, and uh, we are playing through their module, The Borderland Run. Uh, reach module number five. Uh, so if you are intending on playing uh, the Reach, or sorry, the um, Borderland run at some point, uh, just proceed with caution because this session will likely contain spoilers. Um, if you do not care about spoilers for it, or if you've already played the Borderland run, well then, uh, welcome. Let me introduce you to the crew of uh, travelers that we are playing with tonight. I'll go the order I've got you guys on the screen here. Why don't you tell us who you are and who you're playing? First up, we've got James. Hi, I'm James, and I'm playing uh, Captain Ganny, uh, the uh, grumpy uh, titular cap uh, captain of the uh, Rift Wanderer. Very nice. Uh, next up is Graham. Hi, I'm Graham. I'm playing Dane Lovrick, former Black Ops Marine, and now the crew's um, lightweight heavy. Nice. And last, but certainly not least, is Carl. Hello, I am playing Anchor Gavel, who is a Varger, uh, uplifted canine species, and he is ex Navy. Probably did you know ran into Ghani and Dane during his long career, and now was with them uh, trying to make some money. Very nice. Uh, so for those who may be joining us live, I do apologize for the slightly late start. We had some uh, roll, the Roll20s uh, push through updates with cameras caused us to do a little bit of a game shuffle in order to get a functioning camera. So I do apologize for that. Um, guys, this is part nine of the uh, Borderland run. Uh, so let me bring us over to the concourse at um, Gibraltar Station. And uh, you guys can tell us or I think Carl, you missed the last session, so maybe you guys can tell. Last Carl. couple, of se last couple of sessions. Oh, was the last couple? Oh, I guess I've been I've been training the lizard spider thing in the. <laughs> I guess. In the... Yeah, uh, we uh, we actually played cult uh, last week because we had uh, or last okay. time, so we had uh, we were down uh, enough players that we played that instead. Guys, what happened last time? What happened last time? I have uh, two friendly reminders of. Uh, Oh. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're being trailed and, and, and traced. So the interest in our little escapade out into the Aslan uh, Hyrate territories is has, has, has gained, uh, well, a couple of friends here, Owen Tian and Justev Gruxen, the sort of little and large, you might call them. And if you're a British person, you'll, you'll, you'll understand the comedy duo that, that I'm relating, <laughs> that, that I'm relating to. But um, so one's a talker, one's a glowerer. Um, and they're kind of still tracing us in many ways. They're still out there. Um, there was some confrontation, let's say, but uh, unresolved. Not only that, but as we try to move goods and items into the ship to make our way, um, there's a lot of interest by the authorities, the port authorities as well. So they've really clamped down right now um, on anything and anything related to uh, Aslan movement. So they are uh, really tight on that. Um, any movement of Aslan, they want to take an immediate interest in. Um, you know what? I think uh, Carl wasn't here for the uh, the meeting with um, the Varger. I so I, know, I, sure. I kind of was. I, I was. I remember hanging out with them and partying with them. But that was with some separate Varger. This was uh, Amalde. I'm not sure. Did you meet? Okay. Did you meet Amalde? Nope. Okay, so then uh, what do you guys remember about your meeting with her? She was the one, the contact that you were supposed to, it was AM, AMR, I think, was the name of the her company? What was it? Um, ERB. Um, yeah, ERB. You were supposed to collect the package uh from there, and then she told you uh, what what do you remember her telling you about your the status of your package that you're supposed to collect uh, so we need well, to back up a moment we know we we know what the package is yes which, um, which carl did not okay so the package is an aslan 
Um, so that perhaps mm. provides you a bit more context of all the interest. Um, okay. Uh, it's, I think, called Erg Newell or something. Um, right? Erg Noel, yeah. Erg Noel. Erg Noel. Um, which is, uh, a, which uh, is vulgar uh, for a long and dreary road. Um, um, it's, yeah, on the independent colony of Hernan's claim. Six days travel away at 1G. Yeah, um, he, what, um, what happened is uh, the, the the package you're collecting is, is a Aslan uh, who go, goes by the name Ergnoil, which is obviously a pseudonym because it's a Varger word for long and dreary road. Uh, hmm. He apparently ran into some issues with station security and per Gibraltar station policy, if you run into problems, you're put in an airlock, you wait for someone to come who's traveling out and you're out on the first ship uh, going. He apparently was um, exiled on a ship that was bound for a uh, colony on the outskirts of the system um, of the uh, Iner Inurin system. Yeah, Inurin system uh, called Ernan's uh, Hernan's claim. Um, his the Aslan's uh, materials were still left behind, uh, so that stuff was um, uh, the. Uh, luggage was still here for you to collect but Namalde said that's really what you you know uh you're gonna collect this stuff collect him and then make your way to uh uh to your final destination um the uh you also learned that uh he did not seem to have a lot of money but uh it was being financed by someone, and I think you guys were on a subsequent meeting with him all day. You were able to get some information out of her as to who the sponsor was, who was paying mm -hmm. for his bills. Do you remember anything about that? He, he's well. We know he's known. He's of extreme. He's, he's of interest to an extremely influential clan. Yes. Um, the clan now. My my uh, Aslan's very poor. Um, clan Ayuwo Ayuwo. I think that's that is yeah. Hold on, I can tell you. It's a it's a, it's a significant clan. I mean, so just a short course, yeah, uh, like uh, Iowoi. Iowoi. Yeah. Iowoi. So uh, we're starting to realise that with all this um, tension that's going on uh, on on the borders, that we're probably we don't we we can't prove it, but it seems pretty obvious that we are transferring a significant asset that will be influential in shifting the balance and po possibly precipitating action uh, between the Aslan and the border, the sorts of border worlds. Um, and that's a bit worrying. You guys were also approached, I think, I think it was before the meeting with Amalde that uh, Mr. Tian and Mr. Gruxen approached uh, Doctor. Um, um uh ba -ba 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 -ba, Dr. Ilias. Um remember he was coming back from the opera and he was uh approached outside of the uh hostel. Uh he would yeah. ask do you, uh Mr. Tian had a image of a Aslan. Uh and that do you guys remember anything about the nature of that image? Um, it was an it was Aslan. quality, wasn't it? <laughs> it definitely came with some attachments. Um, it uh, what the image showed, uh, Carl, was that uh, it was a Aslan seemingly standing atop some kind of military vehicle with a crowd mm. around him. Um, so suggesting the person that they may be looking for is some kind of either political or military leader of some kind. Um, they were quite polite about that. They, uh, Dr. Ilias said he didn't have and didn't know anything about it. You guys then had the meeting with him all day when um, Captain Ganny and Dr. Um, Ilias returned uh, to the hostel that they were staying in. They found that their rooms had been ransacked. Hmm. Uh, they also found that when they left their meeting with him all day, they found Mr. Tian and Mr. Grookson, uh part way down the block or the concourse i suppose if it's on the starship or uh, space station um and they were seemingly for one wise to the fact that they had a meeting with them all day and two they seem to be keeping an eye on them 
uh, after a bit of a confrontation between Dane and Mr. Grookson, uh, <laughs> they both walked away from one another without resorting to any violence. And um, I think it was Dr. Ilias did a fairly good job of losing Mr. Tian yeah. um, by making a way through a, a local market. And uh, the last thing that happened last session was a meeting with Amalde between uh, Captain Ganny and Dane. Uh, if I remember correctly. And what you guys were trying to find out is, this is where you found out that the person paying for uh, this uh, Aaron Oil's uh, trip is apparently a uh, one of these um, Aslan clans. So somebody is paying for this person to be transported, a, a pretty significant amount for him to be effectively transported in a circuitous way to get back to... Um, uh, is it Tyok that you're heading to? Yeah. Uh, it's, that means it's Hernan's claim. No, no, uh, the eventual destination. Oh, uh, the, uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah basically. It's, yeah, Tyok, yeah. yeah. It's oh, I found my um, it's just, Microsoft yeah. OneNote. Hmm. Yeah, suddenly it's just it's taken a bit of a cold turn, really. <laughs> So that is where we find our things. Is that um, anchor? You, uh, you you've heard that uh, you you did have that that lovely time with um, some local Varger who uh, uh, took you in, um, and you would have been brought up to speed to every to where everything is right now. Um, Dane also, I guess, a final thing. Dane did have. Uh, there's not like it's not clamped down. There's not like troops with with we you know weapons marching around the concourse, but. Getting through um, customs has suddenly become a little bit more of an involved procedure. Not impossible, they're just very intrusive. And Dane happened yeah. to mention that he was traveling with an Aslan as he was carrying their their passage. That resulted in the kind of the Gibraltar station equivalent of the cavity search. Anything else you guys remember from last time? I kind of want to get off this place, and I kind of don't in this sort of a strange kind of way. <laughs> we need to move on, but I don't like where it's going. <laughs> okay. So let's um, let me pick up with you guys back at the hostel. Uh, I, I think it would have been evening-ish when you guys are meeting back up. And maybe, Anchor, you've been, uh, you know, happily uh, training the uh, the lizard thing. Did we give it a, we gave it a name, didn't we? Oh, no. Yeah, it was like a woman's it name too. I think it doesn't have its own log yet. It should do. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll change my uh, character sheet over. Um, let's see, let's see. Yeah, I'm sure I wrote it down somewhere. I just don't remember where. Hmm. Okay, so anyway, um, I'm sure either someone in chat will remind us or we'll remember. Name. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so then, guys, um, you maybe um, get off the ship and, and anchor. You don't have a frame of reference uh, for uh, necessarily for how you know difficult or oh no you do you do have a frame of reference because you've been through security. So let's say mm. you went back to the ship to check on the you know your pet. And as you were coming back through security, you realized like, boy, this is, it seems a little more extreme on the, on the exiting side than what I remember it being. Mm -hmm. um, getting onto the station isn't that much of a deal, but it does seem as if you are, uh, when you're exiting the station, that seems to be a much more involved procedure. Would you guys each also kindly give us a D6 roll? Let's see how much luck you have to work with for today. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh boy. That's not successful. That's, so that's how it's going to be, is it? Yeah. Right. Oh, there's an okay. old uh, joke from uh, uh, Cheers when they were transitioning from Shelley Long into Kirstie Alley, where Sam talks about he was sailing his ship, uh, and then uh, he discovered a new reef, uh, and they called it No Luck at All. And that is sort of where your one is there, Dane. Uh, 
Uh, okay. So you uh, make your way back to the hostel, I think, uh, Anchor, uh, having, like, wow, that's, that's kind of strange that security has been beefed up on here. And mm -hmm. maybe you meet up with uh, Captain Ganny. I imagine the hostel has some kind of... Uh, it probably doesn't, actually. I was going to say, I thought it has, like, a, um, like a, a cantina or something like that, but it probably doesn't because there's so much stuff on Gibraltar Station anyway. It's yeah. probably just a matter of, like, you know... Um, so, and then remember, you guys all have, have uh, comm units as well. Uh, where is Anchor meeting up with you guys to, to scheme for what to do next? Does it have a bar? Uh, there is a bar near the hostel. I'm not sure there's a bar attached to the hostel. Okay. Which, um, all right. But I think that, I mean, uh, we've said that Captain Ganny has been here before, right? Uh, I hope no? we didn't. Oh, at the bar? No, no, at, at, um, uh, Gibraltar <laughs> Station in general. Uh, no. I don't think so. Well, have you? I mean, you've been traveling in uh, the this region for a while, have you not? Or were your explorer service stuff in uh, elsewhere? I think I was mostly in the third period. But if it works better, I've been here. No, it doesn't matter to me. So <laughs> uh, I think uh, Captain Ganny. It sounds like tries to find the the nearest you know kind of naval bar uh, or naval friendly bar. So there is something that'll be like um, there's a reference to some you know. Uh, some conflict in the or some battle in the first border war and uh he's got himself settled in there there's that you know kind of tacky equivalent of it's sort of like um if anyone's ever been to any east coast bars where they've got like the you know all the naval accoutrements and shit on uh east coast north america um when but then it's exported elsewhere in the country where it looks very tacky and very like why are there buoys <laughs> in the wall kind of stuff Mm -hmm. It's that, but for Space Navy stuff. So it's stuff that is like, you know, quite obviously replicas or not, uh, you know, accurate. But it, it has that naval kind of, Imperial Naval kind of vibe to it. Uh, Anchor, when you, you know, walk up, I think you quickly realize why Captain Ganny likely picked this place. Um, and there are some, you know, um, uh, there isn't any, um, I think, serving uh, Imperial Navy Oh, you know what? There probably is was a this, crew. Was this where we met the crew of the Gazelle, right at the beginning of when we first arrived here? Uh, that the Gazelle you met, um, didn't you? Oh, yeah, you did meet another ship here too. That's right. You met in both Argona and here, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this so will be where you're drinking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you can see that um, Captain Ganny and Dane are sitting at uh, a, a table uh, off to the side. You go and uh, join them. Um, what have Captain Ganny and Dane been talking about? Does well, he... we'll, we'll definitely start with the sort of tacky, faded nature of the bar, and how uh, <laughs> you know, is, you know, is the, is that an allegory to of me, basically? And, you know, just... <laughs> is this is this some uh, bootneck getting above himself <laughs> and making comments about the Imperial Navy here? <laughs> 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 yeah, we could do a bit of that. Um, <laughs> you know. Um, well, they, they just so fly. do I have to intervene in, in a, a fight that's going to start, a piss fight? That between... Absolutely. And since you're ex Navy, I hope you're on the right side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're pretty good, ex excellent buses for t t to take people to do all the real work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You know, it's my so, I... so as you sit down, Anchor, um, maybe you, you might have a, a passing comment about uh, the customs going in which we give a Dane an opening yeah, to talk about. Yeah. What's, up with, what's up with customs? Uh, it seems a bit more... Somebody knows something about what's happening. I think somebody knows something about... Well, there's all the pressure um, uh, out on the borders. And I think that's just playing large. Uh, the further you go down into the borderlands, mm -hmm. um, but, it, but it's conceivable that somebody knows something about specifically what we're doing, what we've been asked to do, um, and the interest is high, um, which for me is interesting, and for me means that the cargo that we're taking is really very high value indeed. I see. So we got to get off planet as soon as we can, or? Kind of, I think so. It's so just, is a cargo on board our ship just kind of hiding out, or? 
Sadly not. We've got a journey to get to our cargo. It's a six-day run under 1G. We did look at the potential for, for doing a, an in-system jump. It's neither here nor there. It's, it's, it's a little bit of one and the other. So we're going to do okay. a we're going to, we'll do a 1G acceleration out. Six days. Get to the All colony. Right. Pick up the cargo. All right. But we should leave. We should get off station as soon as possible, I would think. I think so. Sounds good. Yeah. So one of the things you guys had discussed last time was the possibility of picking up cargo for, from here uh, to head to uh, Tech World. Yep, freight and mail. Freight and mail again, okay. Okay. Great, so... Yeah. to check whether we've... whether I've plugged that in. Yeah, we are... Let's see here. Quite. Um, did, uh, did we make the rule yesterday, or yesterday, last time, for the... Uh, for being eligible for mail or not. I feel like we did and you succeeded. But I don't, Let me just check. Um, unfortunately, I had to switch over games so we don't, I can't even scroll back in the roll history. Okay. We don't have uh, anything in the accounts log for um, this system okay. to tech well. Okay. We do have a purchase of 41 tons of unrefined fuel, um, which will, is, but is that, that's largely for inuring to Hernan's claim, which is our next our next voyage. Okay. So the, uh, well, and the fuel is only expended when you jump, right? It's not uh, not with um, sublights? That's right. Yeah. That's right. It's just that we, we, we bought it here because it was here. Oh, got it, got it. Okay, yeah. Oh, right, because you couldn't do the yeah, scooping. So we, we can't do scooping. I remember that. I mean, you can. It's just that, you know, you'll have <laughs> space-borne mines to deal with. Uh, then it is... So for the role for the male, uh, who has the highest uh, naval or scout rank and who has the highest social modifier? Isn't it so not appearing in this sketch? That sounds really cool. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's not, it, it's not it. Anchor. It doesn't have high social uh, rank. I think, yeah, I think Dr. Ilias might have the highest social, if I remember. I think the person we use... Is this where Broker oh, no. might still work? So, so uh, Dr. Ilias has an eight in social, and Alonso... Maybe that's who you're thinking Alonso. of. Alonso's Alonso has a ten with a plus one. There you um, go. And you will be able to take the benefit of your crew. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine yeah, with that. Rank uh, rank four is, but uh, it's a petty officer first class. It's right. anchor. Four, okay. Is that the but highest? As a, the, well, that's a, as a non commissioned officer, but he's a rank four. Okay. I don't know if that. In Ghani, I don't know. Right uh, higher. Ghani was a sub lieutenant. Let me just see. Let me try to scroll down. Uh, do, 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 do. We're talking, we're talking in urine to Hernan's, Hernan's claim here, aren't we? Uh, okay. For for cargo or for mail? No, this will be to Tech World. So this is that's correct. That is to yeah. Tech World. Yeah, he's a sub lieutenant. Uh, uh, the the amount of cargo and what honestly, like the the uh, you can pick up cargo. I guess here's something to consider too. Smaller community. What are you going to say you're showing up for on a? Um, if you're showing up with nothing in your hold in a relatively isolated uh, colony. I mean, can we take, I mean, there's no, there's not much profit to it, but can we take something? I think you could probably at, at like a cut rate price, um, yep. it, it'll... Standard think... supplies. Um, yeah. Uh... Like I thought, and information will still be useful. You I mean, know what we'll do is we'll say that like you're basically going to be able to pick up enough stuff. Normally, it's in-system ships, which would have a lower operating cost than what your ship is. Let's just say that sure. whatever cargo you pick up, it'll cut you. You'll break even with the operating cost for the ship for the six days that you'll okay. be in transit. Awesome. That's yeah. okay. probably the easiest way to deal with this. Yeah. Um. Because I, I think you can picture like as you're talking to people and they're like, "You're wait, what kind of ship you got?" And you're going. <laughs> We were just passing, you know. <laughs> we like, I can't to afford to pay, you know, I can afford to pay this. And you're like, that's fine. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> if nothing, you you guys have, uh, how, it's, it's the equivalent of like <laughs> getting an Uber in a Lamborghini. Like, are you sure you yeah. should be operating this bit? This doesn't seem like a cost-effective business at all. 
it's a good cover. I mean, it's yeah, no, it's just a hobby. It's just a hobby. You know, we just just, just bumming around. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think what you guys can consider is that you probably have made some, uh, at least with some of the local haulers in here, you've made a, a couple of uh, uh, happy people here that you'll be able to draw on. Um, so for the mail to, oh, speaking of which then, do you, uh, I guess the other thing is how much of your cargo do you want to try and pick up from here to bring to Tech World? You know it's a B, um, it's a B class starport at um, Hernan's Claim. We could do it at Hernan's Claim. Um, does it does it does it share the uh, trade coats with? Uh, doesn't uh, it has does its own. I'll put the you know what I'll put its. Uh, hold on. I'll put its stuff in chat. Hey, you know I imagine with all the updates they're doing to the like 2022 2023 updates. Uh, I expect that we're going to see a new GM screen or referee screen at some point, and I would love if they would put the fucking uh, world codes on the new screen because they have it on the twenty three hundred AD screen, but they don't on the original uh, uh, mongoose one. Okay, so here the code is. Well, because those like I, I have just not memorize it, and I have to look it up every uh, darn time. Because we're looking at freight. And mail, the trade codes are far less relevant now. I think about it. Oh, okay. It's more the start. It's nice, but I mean, it's great to have them. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, it's more, it's going to be more the starport and the population. That'll be key. Ooh, and population is which one here? I know the first, uh, the second, uh, sorry, third and the fourth are the atmosphere and the hydrology because I wanted to get images for it. Uh, oh, first one is size. We've got a population of 20 yeah. and we bring them 200 tons of mail. Oh, sorry. So the tech level is is 11. The starport is a C. What? Okay. We own that. So there's zero DM for for that, but the tech 11 okay. will give us and plus two. Population, population is... What is it, the fifth one? one? Two, three, four. Yeah, fifth one. Uh, population is a five hundreds of thousands average city okay so there's 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 no dm for that yeah and then government is a charismatic oligarchy Doesn't so a junta, revolutionary council and uh the law level is a nine which okay. is that's all it's, it's, um, Ooh, it's all just weapons banned no, no, it's just machine parts. The mail. Mm -hmm. um, okay. D does it make much difference then? Okay. So then, what are you guys thinking? Is it just mail? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, just mail. So, so then, a bit mail. I think it's a two d six plus five. Then, or what was your, uh, Ganny? Are you a higher? Uh, rank? I'm a sub lieutenant. So what is that uh, rank number? Uh, <laughs> uh, just shut my book. Let me reopen it again. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, creation. Here we go. So I think Not the freight high. traffic DM is between minus four to plus four. So the DM on the mail roll is a zero. Oh, my, so minus four on on the? No, no, it's it's between minus four and plus four. Minus four. Okay, so is hold on. This? So, freight traffic. Let's see here. Starport B is plus one. Oh, it's part, starport C. So there's no modifier. C plus zero. Yeah, yep. no modifier for world population. Uh, tech level nine or more plus two. Tech level. So you say it's plus two in net. Uh, I think I think uh, assuming that there's no amber or red zone, it's plus two. Yeah, so plus two. So that'd be a net of let's see here plus yeah. So a net of zero modifier from the freight. Yeah, zero from that. Yep. Okay. Sorry, I'm I'm slow. <laughs> My train's slowly yeah. coming into the station you're already at. Uh, <laughs> so then it'll be two d six plus five. Who wants to make the roll for that? Who's feeling lucky? Captain should. Captain should. Yep. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm still trying to find my rank. Where is I? Where's my... <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, Captain's had far too much to drink in this Navy bar. Next is it three? Uh, Navy, here we go. Mm. 
No, I'm only rank two. Okay. So that's no use. All right, okay, so 2d6 so plus five. Plus five, please. You want 12 or higher to be selected for mail service. It's good, good average. It's good average. Come on. Come on, big money. Ah, whoa, whoa, whoa. But you guys have Yay. luck. You want to spend two points of luck? Um, yeah, let's oh, do that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so then how much of your... Let's say that uh, to break even... What are the operating costs? I, just because, Graham, I think you've got your spreadsheet open. What are the operating costs per day for the ship? Um, I don't want to shortchange you too much with how much space we've taken up by that stuff. I think roughly for a week on life support if we're not taking passengers and uh, this is a rough number here i will of course have to go into my detailed analysis but <laughs> roughly 5k it's only roughly 5k for roughly 5,000. okay and it um, says that seems high i think i don't think we're spending a what lot of for? yeah it's about 5k okay um, um so that would have been enough yeah. for one basic passage three parsecs so Let's say that. How much you paid for the mail? Uh, mail is. Oh, 2,500 um, for transporting a container. So every five tons? Per container. Yeah. And there's 1D containers. Oh, yeah. So let's see here. Who wants to. Yeah, Captain, why don't you. Or you're, you're the uh, quartermaster, Dane. Why don't you give us a D6 roll? Spread the joy around. Spread the blame around for the resulting dice roll. Exactly, exactly. So two, two containers. Two containers. Okay, so that's only ten tons. So basically, the rest of it will be filled up with uh, that stuff. You, if there is anything available at um, Ernest Claim that you want to pick up, you're, you're certainly going to be able to pick yeah. it up there. All right. So then, um, and let's we see here. Fifty thousand for um, that's mail. To fifty thousand income to okay. us. Nice. That's not bad for a little mail run. It's not bad. Five thousand cost, fifty thousand for the mail run. Mm -hmm. um, that's ten tons. Yep. Um, we can either decide to get the rest of the cargo here, or get the, or get Frankie get the cargo at the, uh, at the Colony World. Do you Probably remember do how long it takes to? To be asking around about cargo and stuff. I thought I remember reading that in the trading section. I just can't um, spot it right now. I was curious if you've got a day or two to kill while you guys are arranging for the mail service and stuff. Yeah. It's all quite procedural without any time. Yeah, like it, like. all that stuff seems to have been thought out in earlier editions. And I mean, I think I think we're looking at things like freight. Yeah. And we're looking at mail. And that's kind of quicker because we're not having to broker much of that. We're just, right, we're in a just speculative trade. Components. Yeah, yeah, we're just yeah. grabbing components and offering space. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's say it's a day. So you'll have another day's worth yeah. of time on the uh, on Gibraltar Station. Um, it'll take another day into the four weeks, I guess. Four months, you've got sure. like four months to get there, right? Is it four months? Uh, or there is. We need to do a maintenance check in at uh, uh, Hernan's Claim. You'll need to make I a think. maintenance check? We will. We, we've been running for about a month, and okay. um, we need to keep the keep things tip-top. Yeah, it's 16 weeks you have, so another day. So, um, Anchor, Do uh, I think Dane and Captain uh, Ganny will also bring you up to speed on these two rent investigators who have been <laughs> snooping around. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, do you guys have any plans with what to do? You've, you've yet to see them uh, since returning from your meeting with... Um, uh, Amal Day, what are you guys planning on doing with your day tomorrow while you're kind of going around and, and uh, filling the hold and, you know, dealing with the, um, you know, the last minute checks to get the ship ready to go? Anything particular you want to look for, you want to purchase, you want to do, you want to ask around about? Me, I just want to get off. I think we just want to get off. I think actually keeping the low profile is what we want to do. I mean, there's yeah, a brothel actually. on board uh, the station too, mm -hmm. if that's what you... Oh, you meant something different, forgive me. <laughs> no, no, I've, 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 had, I've had my fill while I've been here. <laughs> What's space penicillin? 
Um, yeah. Okay, then um, it is um, anything else uh, that anchor that you wish to do while you're uh, on uh, Gibraltar Station? Um, no, not really. Okay. Um, then oh, one thing we talked about last time too is uh, you guys can feel free to. Or just, uh, what I'm thinking is you can use your uh, your chatty chatty skills if you want to try and find information. Uh, so we'll we'll kind of treat it like. Uh, um, not not quite as abstracted, but uh, similar to how um, but, but, but networking works in uh, Savage Worlds, where you just you can use a skill, you'll ask around. A bad result will mean potentially a consequence from that. A good result will result in you being able to ask some questions about anything. Uh, I don't think any of you have been to Hernan's claim, for instance. So you might have, uh, apart from the entry in the TAS uh, guide, um, you may. You know, want to get a, a pulse on what the what to expect on the trip out there. It is a week through, you know, a pretty busy system, and you guys did have that uh, shadow tracking you as you guys were coming onto, or seemingly following you at least as you were making your way towards uh, Gibraltar. I'm not yeah. sure chatty chatty skills are really our thing. <laughs> yeah. No, you yeah. If you have any other ways of uh, uh, augmenting them, remember if you have a in fiction. Uh, benefit to it, you can often get uh, uh, a boon uh, on your role. So, for instance, if you leaned into, say, your experience in the military, or you know, your contact with the local community, or whatever other kind of in fiction, you know, stuff you want to justify to try and get that bonus, you'll be rolling three d six and keeping the two best. But maybe you enjoy the uh, the. Uh, unknown and the thrill of uh, racing out to a community or a colony you know nothing about. Like I'm mean, just planning to pick a guy up and leg it, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what we find there, I suppose. Um, well, so how, I, I guess mean, what? I can... how, how are you seeing this play out uh, practically when you arrive at Hernan's claim? Like, what's your, put yourself in the, in the head of this person. What what do you expect to find when you guys reach on Hernan's claim? Uh, an ex-corporate uh, mining thing, mining uh, colony. Well, you said it had a high law level, right? So, it has an extremely high, high, high law level and an unconventional form of government. What's the unconventional form of government? Uh, revolutionary, mean? like, ex-workers running the place now. Ah, uh, okay. No, oh, well, that's something um, in its favor, I suppose. Um, hmm. I but specifically want to think, like, do you expect it? to find this person sitting at the, you know, starport on their bag? I guess not their bag, waiting to or be picked the up, or? Well, if it's got a very high law level and this guy's been extradited, then I'm guessing the local cops will have some idea where he is. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, it's more you're expecting a lot stronger cooperation between different organizations. That's the kind of thing you might be able to learn before you go. Okay. Let's Again, like you can go with your expectations, you know, just uh, whatever your assumptions are. Uh, I'm giving you the opportunity of one day of just trying to learn more about what you're going into before you go. Sure. We should do that. Yeah, I mean, I can invest. I have investigate. I don't, I don't have like social skills. I'm not going to try to talk people into telling me stuff, but I can do an investigation on this colony and the history of the conflict or what's going on. Okay. I test out my newfound persuasive ability. <laughs> yeah. So, so let's see, I'm just going to investigate, Carl's gonna see. I think that, um... I don't know why persuade defaults to intellect, but... Yeah. It's like um, give a speech. Yeah, in, invest, uh, investigate. I think there's some stuff you could learn from that as well if you want to look into that. Yeah, sure. Sure, give us an investigate uh, check. Look through the library data, mm -hmm. whatever. Nice. All right, so what you... Uh, I'll tell you some baseline stuff and you can ask questions. Uh, what you okay. know is that Hernan's claim is it has a population of about uh, 30,000. Uh, and there are some others scattered across the colony, but almost everyone lives around where the starport is. Mm -hmm. There is, rough, relatively speaking, um, a modest amount of traffic between the two, but it is very much off the beaten path for the um, for the kind of tra uh, uh, traveling. 
for the for the um, for the ships going back and forth. And as a result, it, it's also pretty safe because there's so little traffic going back and forth, and it's so relatively um, uh, it, it's so relatively modest in what it's transporting that piracy is kind of a uh, a non-existent thing along that route. Um, do you have any questions about uh, what you might learn yeah, from I mean, just that, that level of investigation? Um, well, like you had mentioned that there's a conflict of rebels. So what is the, like, is it cold right now? Is it hot? Is there like a... Oh, no, no, they, that's just a, what, that rebels is just one of the categories that's included in the, um, uh, in the description, in the, the country, the planet code. What uh, their situation is there, it's stable, um, but it's largely just people going about their business. They're, um, from what you can tell, it seems like a very boring and, uh, you know, work-minded place. You don't find anything sensational in any kind of the news stories that you're able to, to pull up. Uh, the, uh, you know that it's, if you think of kind of like um, a quasi-terraformed Mars, um, that's about what to expect from it. It's very arid. It has um, uh, an atmosphere, but the atmosphere is thin enough that you're going to need to uh, to wear some kind of suit in order to move around outside. Um, but people have been there for quite some time, and there's not really uh, uh, the corporate interest uh, left, but it didn't really leave from revolution. It left from just pulling out, and the people who were there just kept on working and managed to keep on going without the um, uh, the interest of a corporation. Other than that, it's it doesn't seem anything sensational, you know, about the the place, or at least not that you can find in in the research you're doing in the kind of um, the whatever the net equivalent uh, is. Okay, risking an encounter that I don't I'll want let, to have. Yeah, so I I'll let say. these guys know. Okay. So. Yeah. Okay. And what are you thinking, Dane? Who are you? Yeah, I'm thinking so. R r risking an encounter that I don't want to have. So being absolutely on my guard as best as I can be and as recon uh, aware as I can possibly be. I will cruise a few bars and I'll okay. ask just some open questions like, well, oh, yeah, we're doing a standard sort of mail run out to uh, Evans claim. Downplay, downplay, downplay. Okay. What's and that place like? Are you, you know, sticking like, to, is there a specific, um, like are you sticking to sort of naval bars? Are you relying on your military experience? What do you no, mean? No, no. Uh, so I will I will go largely trades because I mean largely what we're doing is trades. So yep. it's like the Starport Bar, um, sort of any 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 place where there's commerce. Because really um, I'm expecting the worst in terms of sure. sort of the lower level stuff. But it's kind sure. of what what traders are finding. Yeah, they have to encounter when they get there, and you know we're just a simple you know free trade operation. We're running some mail. Um, we we might want to do some trade when we get there because we want to do some onward. On you know we don't, we don't even know where. Yeah, but what's it like? Sure. Uh, so give us uh, you uh, you'll get a boon on that, and go ahead and give us your what are you thinking persuasion? I'm good at thinking of persuasion. Yeah, Anna says um, it's a good idea. Gonna, uh, <laughs> let me. How do I do? A, a boon on that let me just uh is there a way of doing a, how do you do boons sorry it's just it, it'll, it should roll automatically it's at the top yeah there yeah. should be a button at the top oh the yeah top. yeah 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 so there's a thing isn't there there's a thing bane it's like advantage in D, &D. so exactly okay. bang submit nice yeah. well okay so i'm running with a bane as much oh you're with a bane yes yeah, so that's a nine uh, so yeah, then there's definitely a success. No, no luck needed. So you're asking around, and you, you, a lot of what you hear is sort of confirms what um, Anchor uh, has, uh, at least as the baseline level of, of information. Do you have any specific questions you want to ask me? Um, uh, what's customs like? Um, what's kind of the um, what's the bureaucracy like? Um, are there any are there any standard protocols? that we should observe other than rituals or um, customs. Um, and by customs, I mean that with a small C, not like a capital C, yeah. that we should be aware of that we know would it help help smooth the way when we're there. Yeah, what they tell you is that they're, uh, for one, um, the law is you're not allowed any, you know, uh, any weapons whatsoever on board, but that's a carryover from uh, corporate days. Everyone is just used to living that way. 
So, you know, partly uh, due to uh, safety concerns, it, it, it's a planet that has, uh, or a, a colony at least, that has no uh, atmosphere. So, you know, you can't very well having people shoot through um, bulkheads. But there's also um, um, people just are used to living without there. If there was um, a slogan that you're getting from from a Hernan's claim that everyone's talking about, it's mind your business. Oh, good. It's very much oh, a good. get your head down, work, a, uh, whatever other people's business are or their own, they're going to keep to themselves. Um, okay. We're just rubber traders. Good. We're just rubber traders, just trying to make a living like everybody else. Yep. Screw you know, s screw the bosses. We're just trying to we're trying to find our way. Okay, I think I think we can do this. That's definitely the they suggest is a, is a smart approach. Uh, if you're showing up, just making a, a run. Anyone, anyone showing up in a ship that you know is an out system ship that didn't have a specific reason to be there is going to be um, a curiosity for them and something that might draw the attention. But if if otherwise you're there, so long as you abide the you know the uh, the local laws. As long as you uh, mind your own business, I don't care. Uh, they're friendly, uh, you know. They're not um, unfriendly, but it's not really a place to to go vacationing. Um, and mm. it does have. If you do think to to ask, um, it does have a modest um, Aslan uh, population too. That's useful as well. Okay, that's really useful. So we're just working grunts trying to make a life, just yeah. like everybody else. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. And I shall I shall make as surreptitious and as vigilant a way back to the ship as I uh, back to the um, yeah hostel. Okay. okay. Um, and would you give us a a recon roll too, Dane? <laughs> uh -huh. uh, with a boon? No. <laughs> <laughs> I know you've been quite paranoid, and uh, the two folks you're looking for are pretty conspicuous. So I, I I'll let you go ahead and roll that with a boon. Oh, you're very kind. Let's see if that pays off. At that mm, good. holy shit yeah. mm. uh so it's when you come out of your like your third bar or whatnot and you're trying to make your way back um you can see that mr grookson is making his way around uh seeming to stop and talk to a couple people uh he does not see you however and i'm i i make sure he doesn't okay i can i, I make a very quick quick move away i don't i don't want any more entanglements with them okay uh, so you are certainly able to um, to extricate yourself and uh, and head back to the ship, um, Captain Ganny. Is there anything you wish to do, or are you just getting ready for departure? Uh, yep, yeah. I'll be as usual, pottering around my engine room, making sure everything's tickety boo. Okay. I've even got my um, uh, life support skill now from space, uh, University of Space Phoenix. <laughs> nice. So now I've got all the engineerings. At Excellent. Level one. You guys are, the likelihood of your death is getting smaller by the day. All right, so then let's um, let's head on over to the ship itself. And I think we're about in time for our mid-session break. And let's see here. Here we go. Yeah, and our uh, departure. And it'll give me time to grab the book with the interesting voyage uh random table <laughs> <laughs> so uh then for those listening at home we'll be back in about uh, five minutes okay okay
just hit a million credits, by the way. <laughs> I mean, we're going to lose some of that, but um, one million sixteen thousand five hundred. We can afford a missile with that, right? <laughs> Quite. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's expensive. No law cost, but we can afford the missile. It's a cost of living crisis. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> we can just buy the missile and then leave it in the cargo bay and just go <laughs> with it every yeah. now and then. Is a missile, but on no account should you launch it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we can't afford to. No. <laughs> no. no. I'm making a living. That's why you need a sandcaster, because then you just bankrupt your opponent. <laughs> what was the? Uh, what? Remind me. What was the? Was the ship owned outright? Or was it a mortgage on it? No, we own it outright. Okay, that's fine. That that makes it viable. <laughs> yeah. They'd kill us with a mortgage. The good doctor had a chunk from oh, his yeah. ship, and I had a chunk of shares in a ship as well. So I think added yeah. together, we pretty much covered it off. Medics get good pensions. Yeah, the main goal will be to find nothing on the way to Hernan's claim. <laughs> exactly. Go there, pick the guy up, shove off. Yeah. Yeah. So you managed to sell uh, Dragon's Bane onwards then? It looks like it, yeah. Thank you for that, uh, thank <laughs> you for that setup, James. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I genuinely think um, Dragon Bane's a great one. Well, I think it's a great one full stop, but I think it would work very well in a sort of school setting. Um, All right, okay, cool. Yeah, because it's a bit more lighthearted, isn't it? Carl, you're on uh, mute. I think you're talking about, are you? Yeah, it's it's light. It's it's light. It's, <laughs> it's light opposite. It's like the die rolls are opposite D and D, right? Yeah, that's true. It's it's uh, it's 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 clear. It's Swedish, so it's got a BLP DNA. This is a dragon. Got a bit of Higger to it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I think I you were I have you to blame for a copy of that coming to me eventually. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? It may happen. I got I got a copy of it for um at the uh, I got at the free RPG day. Okay. Oh nice! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah nice. So, All right, awesome. cool. It's got a nice little a nice little two adventure in there. Oh yeah, cool. Yeah. So maybe I'll try that. It's pretty. I, I got um Rune Masters um back uh, yeah. when it. Uh, I, I can't remember when I was picking up some stuff from uh, Free League, and I it looks it looks great, uh, but uh, it has served more as like the base for my speaker, my portable speaker, more effectively um, than it has a game at the table because it's great. But I, like I just don't know what what um, old school sandbox game would I displace to run that, right? When you got forbidden yeah. lands available, and you've got you know a D and D or old school D and D. Um, any number of the new, you know, I, even geez, I, I had, uh, I was digging around, uh, for something else and I found a copy of, I can't remember what the game is called, but it's a, um, uh, streamlined old school game set in, uh, like bronze age Mesopotamia. And there's a cool little sandbox thing. And he's, it's one of those games that's like, it's a folio more than anything. Um, but <laughs> yeah, but Dragon Bane does look a little, uh, a little more meaty than what uh, Rune Masters yeah. did. Yeah, it's it's got it's got legs. You yeah. could certainly run a lengthy a lengthy campaign. But does it's, it have its, its own like? Um, does it have its own like world or just whatever? So very specifically, not. It comes with a sandbox, 
So it comes with like a Misty Veil vale sandbox, within which, in the box, you get a mini campaign of nine adventures. Um, sort of like in classic sort of sort of site sort of site based adventures, um, which tie together to make a story. So you've got something to get going straight away. Um, but they haven't. There's some talk that they might produce a world for it. But the the, the idea is, is you plug it into your own. Um, uh, but Erebaltor is the is the old Drachor and Ochdemona world, and who knows that there's some talk about being translated. So maybe one will come afterwards. Okay. So, uh, let's see here. Uh, I, I have made good use of my random table and again for those who be curious. Yes. This is the <sighs> issue. It's issue seven of the TAS uh, Society Journal. There's a fun little thing of a weekend jump where you can create uh, minor little things to not not necessarily random encounters, but like to make things interesting over the course of uh, of a trip. Um, let's see here. We're okay. It can be boring. It's no problem. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the fun we of that? We jump, we get there, and we get off. It's good. We're quite keen to meet nothing. I was yeah. just going to say that. <laughs> let's see. I'm going to read Space is big. Me, myself, study books, and nothing else. <laughs> University of Space Phoenix books. All right. Carl, you're a spinning wheel for some reason. Yeah. I don't know if that is. Yeah, I think I think he froze uh, a little bit. With, oh, there he is. He's back. With... Okay. okay. All right. So, guys, uh, as you uh, get yourself ready, and as the uh, Rift uh, Wanderer uh, heads out into space, so I have a I don't know a space version. I know that the uh, gosh, I can find a version of a Far Trader in space uh, with an image search. I really need to do that. Um, <laughs> But uh, do you guys have any plans for, you know, your six days of uh, travel heading out to Hernan's claim? Um, oh, you might be muted, Carl. I saw you say something, but... I, I, We're I think... just planning to have a restful time, just playing yep. cards and waiting for the theater, that's all. All right. So then... <laughs> yeah, first... nothing specific planned, I would say, right? Okay. Yes. Right. So let's see here. Which of these happens? Get the sensors running. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jack, I can't see Carl. So I'm going to just quickly reconnect okay. to see if that helps. Yeah, I can't. I can only see Kevin right now. Okay. Right. Let me just um, reconnect. There we go. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Sorry. So I'll mute again too in roll twenty. Okay. Perfect. Let's remember to mute yourself Let's again mute in, in, in Rule 20, or you'll have the Echo Echo. Oh, yeah. Uh, all right, so it is two days out uh, of travel from Gibraltar Station. Um, wood, 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 Wood. Uh, oh, it's normally, right, Dr. Ilias, who mans the sensors. But uh, Carl, would, you, would Anchor kindly give us a, uh, what is it, computer sensors? Oh. Okay, I have. Is that the one? Is it like electronics? Electronics. Sensors. Electronics. electronics. Sensors. Yeah. So yeah. just regular electronics for me. Okay. Oh, I, oh, I do have sensors. Oh, I do have, I do have sensors. Yeah. yeah, I thought you said you okay. could use it before. Yeah. Okay. There awesome. So the good news is there is no sign of uh, any uh, anyone at all uh, following you guys as you're making your way cool. out towards that. Um, you are completely alone in space. And it's the third day uh, of travel when I think, um, Dane, probably you heading down from when where the uh, the gym is on board the ship. Yeah. You head down into the cargo uh, bay and uh, you're about to, you know, um, get your pump on and <sighs> something smells chemically Oof, down here. Okay. Um, can I can I see anything that's any, any leaks or anything that's in in the cargo? Yeah, I'll I'll, 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 I'll do a, a, a tour around and just yeah, see. Yeah, there's no. You, you don't need to make a roll for this. So you you uh, make a look around. It takes you about maybe five minutes of looking around, and it seems that one of the containers that you brought on from that's destined for 
uh, Hernan's claim, not the mail, but the other containers, um, it appears to be leaking. There's some okay. kind of uh, thick, viscous kind of substance that is uh, is coming out of it and has been pooling slowly. It's got to be a very small leak or the stuff is just very, very thick. Or maybe the leak's high up. Whatever the case is, there is a small pool of this shit. It doesn't smell... It has like kind of a, a, a mix of like, you know, the smell of antifreeze uh, with... You know the pungent kind of cleaning solution smell. Okay, all right. So, all Could together I, um, unpleasant. All right. Could I, uh, with a bit of care, um, work out what the manifest uh, was for this particular container and what it what it's supposed to be sort of having it? Um, yeah. Do I have to do that by opening it, or can I work it out from the sort of, sort no, of freight no. number? And I imagine that like one of the things you would have to declare. You know. Um, even with, with uh, cargo just being run in the system, like hazardous materials would have to be identified. Uh, why don't you give us a, uh, I think it'd be some kind of science. Oh yeah. How, how about explosives? <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> uh, hey, science, your... I can do science. Yeah, and you know, and I think, why don't you, um, um, I've got zero. I've, I've 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 done my basic O levels. Um, uh, one sec here. <laughs> Exterior factor. Uh, let you roll it with a boon because you're. Uh, we're assuming you're accessing also the computer database. Okay. Um, yeah, this is stuff like don't eat it, you know, uh, don't apply it to any skin, uh, but whatever the yeah. substance is, it's, it's nothing that's going to explode or what, like just, you know, um, it's likely something used in, in, um, some kind of, uh, off world you know, heavy machinery. Uh, but it does can mean it's making an awful mess here. And yeah. You, can I apply sort of Acme's, um, sort of starship patch? Sort yeah. Of thing <laughs> Space that... duct tape. <laughs> yeah, kind of, sort of, you know, sometimes it's maybe used even for sort of bits of sort of hole fracturing and stuff. Oh, yeah, smooth, yeah, 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 totally. And, yeah, I think, what is that, uh, uh, and then, mechanics, probably? Oh, it got the could be, couldn't it? Mechanic, I'm going to say mechanic is a good good fit there. Okay. Um, I'll run that with a normal, just to see how, see how oh, good so hold the on. patch so is. Mechanic is to maintain, well, is there a repair? Okay, oh, repair. Wait, no, no, because there's, uh, yeah, mechanic is used to maintain, oh, and repair. <laughs> okay. Read the whole sentence, Madison, before you start going off on a wild goose chase. Yeah. Fucking hell. Okay. Okay. Now, if you want to check. No problem. Uh, so that is cleaned up and patched and no difficulty. I'll, I'll knock things up. Sorry, uh, Captain. Yeah. Gandhi, did you say something too? No, no, no. I was just going to say uh, mechanics, my thing. But uh, there was no oh, need sorry. since he got aced yeah. anyway. <laughs> Do you find a shirtless Dane who is, uh, you know, mid-workout finishing, cleaning up some stuff? Once again, as you're heading for the crew, you know, or, oh, you, yes, you spent all your time in the, um, uh, in the front end. Uh, maybe um, Alonzo is, uh, you know, w walks past with his cigar out, sees you working and kind of like holds the cigar back from the material. Yeah, yeah. At least it's not blood, I say. <laughs> yeah. It's good. All right. Um... <laughs> Is there anything you guys wish to uh, to do during this this time, or anything you any scenes um, you want to play out with one another? Or, I mean, if uh, we hear about that, that kind of I guess trips uh, anchors conspiracy. It's like, did those guys who were following you ever get close enough to the ship to maybe put like a bug on it or something? Mm, maybe we should check so. around for that. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, there's no harm checking. I think it's it's yeah. probably wise. To check. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the yeah, thing no, is no, with anchors that he's never wrong about the conspiracies, though. So. That's true. In all my years in the Navy, 20 years or so, I was never wrong about a conspiracy. <laughs> okay. Then, um, let's see here. So do we do, do we need to do a sweep or? Uh, yeah, I, I think I think what I'll do, though, is I'll do it as a secret check. Um, mm -hmm. So you'll not know the outcome. Uh of it necessarily. I'm just seeing about the modifiers. I like that on page 64, there's that advice on difficulty, boons, banes, 
and uh, dice modifiers. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any gear you're using to uh, oh. to conduct the scan? I can't remember if you guys picked up you any kind of hand scanners or anything like that. Check. I've got. I'm trying to justify my uh, purchase of the new central supply catalog here. So there's a wide variety of things we have available for you. Yeah, I just have a computer, my hand computer, that's it. Just your hand computer? Okay, so it'll be yeah, an I've eyeball a... search, which is not, you know... Uh, anchor I've got strikes mechanical me as, toolkit. Uh, tactical toolkit? A mechanical toolkit. Mechanical toolkit, okay. A big one, 12 <laughs> kilos of it. Tactical toolkit. Oh my god. Every spanner you can possibly want. <laughs> Alright, so... Um, I think then, that's probably... Hmm. Yeah, it's probably investigate actually, Carl. Or uh, anchor. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Okay. So. All right. Investigate. Oh, wait, hold on. Sorry. What, what is your modifier? It's a secret roll. What am I doing? Oh, um, investigate. I have a plus two. Plus two. Okay. All right. Uh. So you conduct a, we'll say you take one of the days to fully kind of look around everywhere in the cargo hold and then begin expanding your search out. As far as you can tell, like there's nothing, what you wish you had is some kind of, you know, proper uh, a sensor that might, let's take a look at the central supply catalog just to, so I, this uh, a scanner is, um, not necessarily something that is going to be. We've already had uh, an occasion with that uh, cargo that the uh, that guy brought on board, where um, Dane wasn't able to to do a, a scan of it, and that guy mm -hmm. smuggled in that uh, that weapon, right? Yeah. Well, so here we go. Let's see. The toolkits, the rescue kits. Okay. I'm trying to see if it's in here because I think there are. Even in the core rulebook, there were sensors that would allow you to, like densitometers, yeah. would, would uh, see inside things. So maybe you might want to look into something like that. Uh, from, the, from the cursory scan that you've got, um, and like you, I'm, I've assumed that you've taken, uh, you've done a thorough search of taking extra time to pull everything out and you know search in with lights mm -hmm. and stuff like that. As far as you can tell, there's nothing else, nothing amiss in here. Yeah. Um, if you are very paranoid, you might want somebody or yourself to look in the computer because you remember that, uh, seemingly or the theory of how you guys were tracked to this meeting, uh, was that Dr. Ilias's comm device was hacked. Mm -hmm. Remember they, they sent him that, uh, that image mm -hmm. and then he opened it up without any kind of, you know, uh, extensive scans or whatnot, and that gave access to all of his comm with you guys. So ah. that's oh right, you weren't here. Sorry, you weren't here for that. So what one of the um what one of the guys seems to be uh, Mr. Uh, Grookson and Mr. Tian seem to be fairly proficient with um, uh, computers because uh, they okay. were able to hack. So maybe there might be something in the the the, the ship's computer. Okay. Yeah, I'll let the captain know. I haven't found any physical bug, but remember what happened to Dr. Ilias. Maybe we can hey. check. Let me have a look. Computers. Let me have a tinker. What is your computer's bonus? Two. Two? Okay. So you do a thorough, uh, and, and I imagine you've, um, after your, your encounter heading out to Argona, with that other guy who had hacked your computer, you're getting kind of old hat at this. As far as you can tell, Captain Ganny, there's nothing, nothing untoward uh, in the computer. You're not able to locate any kind of bug or malware or anything like that. Whatever the traveler equivalent thereof is. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, then it is uh, five days into your trip. You are one day out from. 
uh, from what he called um, from uh, Hernan's claim. Hernan's claim. Thank you. Hernan's claim. <laughs> yeah, my, little spinning wheel in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is it? Is it? Um, when what I'd like you guys to do. Um, well, let me tell you what the outcome is here, and then I will let you guys determine how much luck you wish to put into each of your roles. Mm. Someone has forgotten their ID behind on Gibraltar Station. Low roll is the one that forgot their uh, their ID behind. So yeah. it would be 1d6 will roll, and low roll is the party who left their ID behind. And you can spend as much of the available six luck. Well, I just roll and then you make the decision on luck afterwards because that that's I don't want to make you blind bid away all your luck. Yeah. And I will say <laughs> I randomly generated when this event was gonna trigger when you would notice it, and it was unfortunately five days out. All right, Captain Ganny. So when you arrive at customs, you are not going to have, I guess, why don't you tell us how is it that he realizes that this has been left behind somehow? Oh, I guess when getting ready for arrival, then I'll notice at that point. Yeah. And your mind goes to, um, fuck when your, your room was tossed. Like you were, th you thought, as he said, uh, last time you thought pretty, you were fairly certain that you hadn't brought anything of interest. I mean, you would need your your ID to be able to pass through customs. Um, but um, must have been stolen. That's the thing. Did they steal it, uh, or did you lose it? So, when you notice that, when you realize that, how do you bring it to the rest of the crew's attention, or do you, is that a problem you'll just deal with when you arrive? Oh, I'll just tell them. I mean, there's just this on there. I'll just say, look, looks like I'm going to have to head back on the way, but uh, better push on now and head back. try and Can resolve the issue. Get in a, what is it? Like, what is it? it if you don't like have I'll an just... ID, just generate another one. I mean, I don't know. I think the thing that is, is the... Um... The consequence of it would likely be that uh, all the advantages he has as his identity, so it'd be things like his rank, his you know um, proof of ownership of the or partial ownership of the ship, um, all those things would all likely be linked to that. Um, that's probably the extent of the ID. Like it wouldn't be, um, yeah. I mean, is it, yeah, as you say, uh, is it possible to, uh, if the details that is basically his entire ID locked to a physical, to a physical um, device, or um, can, at a cost, um, they be regenerated into a new physical design uh, device? I think any. Uh, um, at the appropriate place. At the appropriate yeah, yeah, place. Yeah, yeah. Like a task. Exactly. Yeah. I think like any task or, uh, organized, any um, hostile or organization or whatnot, you, you can likely get a uh, new ID secured through them. Uh, that would be and one. And invalidate that... the old one. Yeah. And invalidate the old one. Yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but and really, you know, the I guess that the downside is it's going to make uh, customs here be a little bit more um, involved. I probably just have to stay on the ship. Okay. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's 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 just, that's just, that's a shame for such a scenic sight as uh, Hernan's plane. <laughs> yeah, I can't claim that, but it's just <laughs> yeah. Yeah, hold on. Let me. Uh, while you guys are doing that, so um, apart from that uh, minor inconvenience, uh, there the trip is otherwise uneventful. So. Uh, let me show you what the approach to Hernan's claim will look like. Oh, hell, what am I doing? There we go. Guys. 
here is what you are approaching. Nope, that's just anchor. <laughs> Hold on, let me grab your crew. Where did I leave you guys? Here we go. That's quite swish. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah. It's not a um, uh, terribly... Uh, oh, you know, jeez, uh, you guys are... Let's do this. Whoop. And whoop. There we go. So, um, that is the uh, place. It, it isn't much beyond uh, what you see kind of here. There is the, the big built up uh, areas with the, uh, the spaceport itself where, where ships can come and go. Uh, it is a low port in Hernan's claim. And in spite of it having a very thin atmosphere, there are there is still life here. Uh, as you can see, there are some strange, um, like scavenging things that seem to be flying around, kind of like uh, like the equivalence of uh, with a low atmosphere. Uh, I'm picturing something akin to like uh, like birds or you know bats with extremely oversized wings that seem mm -hmm. to you know uh, hurl around and. Uh, yeah, they seem to be not a navigation uh, um, hazard in any way, but uh, it gives the place a feeling of life, even though you know that, you know, you would likely or you would need some kind of vac suit in order to survive out there. You hear from Hernan's claims, uh, the like port control um, message, mm -hmm. and they direct, you know, they uh, ask um, uh, Rift Wanderer, uh, what is your purpose? Yep, just uh, delivering mail and uh, potentially picking up passengers. The mail is bound for uh, Tech World. Oh, done. Right, there's oh. no mail run to here. Okay, so it's just it's just a minor cargo then. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, guys, just... I wasn't clear with that before. You're going to get the full right. cost of your mail because it's it's trying like again transporting across parsecs is the challenging thing. There are shuttles that could transport mail within the the ship here within the system. Okay. So, um, and that's why I wanted to figure out how much of the, what percentage of the cargo was going to be up of what the mail was and what the other stuff is. So you, it's fine. It, it, what yeah, is so it? Is it 59 or 69 available tons you have? I should put it on the, like uh, total. On... Cause you got that ship, that's that, uh, car on here too, right? The air car. Yeah. Yeah. Roughed, yeah. yeah. Continually under a tarp. It's effectively like, uh, some dad's retirement project. I'm going to get to that air car someday, guys. Don't you worry. Uh -huh. One day we'll be glad of it. Mm -hmm. um, I bring it to your attention only because you'll probably have an opportunity to grab whatever the free space is in other assets heading for Tech World. Yeah. So, I mean, we've, we've only got a couple of tons, I think. Of, is that right? Of, uh... Yeah, you get the far trader. Far trader oh. has uh, 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 sixty-three tons in cargo. I thought. Hmm. Am I thinking fifty-nine because the other one is four? No, well, it's. I think it's sixty-three minus four for the air car. Got it. Okay, so that's right. yeah, great. So that means you guys will have forty-nine tons of space. Well, it's, it's forty-nine tons of cargo that you're delivering here. They um, um, they say, okay, uh, yeah, uh, very good landing platform, 5ZFE. Uh, Welcome to Hernan's claim. And you guys, whoa, 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 bring the ship down. I don't know why it sounds like a hover car. Uh, and land the, um, the Rift Wanderer without incident. Now, um, what are you guys intending on doing here? I don't think I have another... Let's see here. Let me bring mm. you over. Sorry, guys. We're using the same concourse once again until I'm, you know, not lazy so, and I grab a new concourse for us. So my suggestion is our uh, modus operandi from here mm. or further onward ports until we reach our destination is we'll take mail, we'll take freight, and we'll take no passengers. But that I'm open to your suggestions. Passengers have just proven to be a liability um, no problem. and you know they're all right in cold birth though aren't they uh we could take cold birth we could take low passage you're right low passage, yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's a good point yeah we'll take low birth but that's it okay 
I'm putting um, that up we, to give you a reminder where we are. Oh, great. Fantastic. So we will, so as a minimum, we will be um, putting forward for both, well, not for mail, because we've got the mail, but for freight for the, for, for, for the next onward journey. So we're, we're, we're emptying, emptying our cargo, um, all this sort of set stuff we said we would take for virtually mm. no, no cost. Um, and then we're going to look for freight options for now is it is it straight to tech world from here yeah it's it is, is that a one or it's two, one jump, two I think. so it's a jump one is it? yeah it's it's a, uh, where's the map gone i think it's a i think it was here we go oh you yeah, beat me to it there beat me to it i was just loading it up there yeah it's one yep yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh yes, yeah, so it is. It's, it's jump one, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So it's a, it's a, it's a jump one uh, freight run to Tech World. Yeah. Have you guys decided on how you wish to go from Tech World? Is it uh, Tech World? Then you're leaving here to head to another or? Not we were trying Hilfer, but maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. I thought the yeah, idea was maybe that we went to Hilfer and then went the long way round because we were told not to go straight to Tioch. Oh, there you go. What? Trinax. Look at that. Trinax. Yeah, Only... Trinax, then Kusai. Okay. Yeah. Katerua. Guys, and then if you're going to give me a couple of weeks to, to brush up on my Brian Blessed impression, then I tell you, <laughs> it's going to be a good time. <laughs> well, all the more reason to do it then. So. <laughs> Awesome. All right. So then, uh, yeah, that's what, that, and then I think you said what you guys had said before is from there, yeah, to Kasai and then sort of backdoor it into uh, Tyok. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Then um, it is. Uh, okay. We'll head on back to. Uh, so we need to locate our. A passenger as well. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, Captain <laughs> Ganny, uh, it's not impossible for you to get through here, right? Like, there is such a thing as bribery. I don't want to uh, uh, offend your delicate sensibilities, but uh, there is a possibility of bribing your way on board here uh, or just going through a procedure of explaining what's happening. Um, you're in system, so, like, their ability to communicate with, um, say, TAS, there may be a nominal fee you'll have to pay for TAS to certify that you're a member to give you a, a way to get through customs. Um, it'll just mean that it, you know, you would be probably incurring that little fee each time until such time as you get a replacement for your ID. Yeah, but that's not... Uh, is there a pressing need for me on board on the... Your call, I mean, like this uh, as a, on a, a metagame uh, level, this as a player, if you want to sit back and watch everyone mm, else do yeah. stuff, like you're, that's fine, but... I mean... If we could get you to um, oversee uh, the maintenance run on the ship, that needs to be done. I don't know if that's, that's something that you, would, that you would kind of oversee and sort of yeah. run and order things from the ship, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Sam, it. go ahead and I would contact them, ask to get your credentials back. But Exactly. If I can get, get them to start processing getting uh, the full credentials, then that makes sense. Okay. To try and get that done. And TS, ooh. What's this place got? Let me see here. I wonder if, uh, oh, Tech World would for sure have a TAS uh, outpost. So if you want to pick up something at Tech World, um, yeah. then uh, rather than heading back to Gibraltar Station, uh, you certainly could do that. Okay, that probably makes more sense. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. All right, then. Um, Dane and Anchor, um, you guys are the ones through. Uh, I'm assuming you're not trying to smuggle any guns through or any weapons through. No, no. Okay. No, I'll leave. Leave the new big toy gun thing. <laughs> <laughs> so as you guys make your way uh, in, it the what you find is that the people um, who are working customs. Uh, when, even on Gibraltar Station, there was the trappings of kind of a like a proper government with uniforms and whatever else. Things are much more casual here. Um, there are still people who are wearing, you know, kind of uniforms, but they look like 
they look more akin to the kind of um, like work coveralls that you would see with a um, you know someone who was working in a, uh, a shop or something like that, as opposed to uh, or you know. Um, working in a warehouse as opposed to someone who was working in a quasi uniform going through customs they're friendly um and you see as uh, you um expected you can see that working at one of the uh customs desks uh there is an aslan as well uh, so then they seem to be uh incorporated pretty fully into the um into the local you know uh, the local society the place is a, not nearly uh, Gibraltar Station wasn't like fancy by any means, but this place definitely has a much more of a bare bones kind of atmosphere. It's not really, uh, it's not really designed to accommodate, uh, you know, business travelers or stuff like that. It's people arriving off planet with no frills, get to, you know, where you want to go. Outside some of the big viewing ports, you can see the sprawling, you know, uh, canyon uh, from, you know, around the, uh, the spaceport going out and still some of those strange, you know, um, local birds or whatever flying around or, or winged uh, creatures flying around in the canyon. Once you're through um, customs without uh, incident, um, what are you guys intending on doing? One thing you can see in this spaceport is that while there are... Um, you know, there are the usual amenities you'll see in a spaceport, like a place to grab a bite to eat, a place to grab, you know, um, something to read or electronics or whatever. All this stuff is very aged and um, doesn't seem like it's kind of cutting edge. And your amount of options at the spaceport are very limited. Mm -hmm. There is uh, transportation that'll take you elsewhere in here as well, whether inside or outside. There's little like shuttles that would uh, hustle you from one of the communities to the other ones, but most of the stuff is either domed or underground. So a, a, a speculative trade run of luxury goods to this place would be quite good, but if we could afford it. Could be, you gotta cool. know your market though. Yeah, yeah, true. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think of the, okay. um, the people who were convinced they were gonna make a fortune with uh, cutlery uh, to China. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so have you? Have got any no one has any is selling them here at all. There's surely an untapped market here. Yeah, when they got there, they found that somebody else had eaten their lunch. <laughs> so, what's the plan then, Dane Anchor? We need to source our contacts, don't we? That's the thing we need to do mostly. While 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 the maintenance is being organised and Alonso is sorting out um, um, freight. Yep. Yeah. And, oh. and uh, low passage. Well, we got to locate our person, right? I mean, yeah, we have to try and do that. Um, All right. I don't think. We'll... Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I don't think we were given any details on how how we were going to do that, were we? No. In terms of the and you, you don't know. Um... Yeah, yeah, you don't know anyone uh, here either. So I suppose one of the things we could do is do a first pass of um, anyone who's registered as an interested passenger, um, just to see whether our particular contact has put themselves on a sort of an outbound passage list. So I have um, randomly generated uh, using whoop, uh, Starport's source book. Yay. An event mm -hmm. for the backwater location here. <laughs> One of the few services that the Starport offers is unavailable due to tech issues. This might be the fueling systems, landing lights, repair shed, anything that serves an inconvenience. Unless player characters step in and help speed things up, the repairs will take 4D6 hours to complete. So what I'm going to assume is that it, it means that you're going to have some time to, uh, to get yourself uh, sorted here because the maintenance, the, the materials you'll need to run the, the standard maintenance of the of vessel uh, are going to take you let's see here an what? extra 16 hours after six days of travel that's not really a big uh inconvenience i imagine so no. where is your first destination you're standing in the you're through customs you're standing in the concourse everyone you know seems to be going about their business. In contrast to the hustle and bustle of Gibraltar Station, this is positively, 
you know, um, ghost townish. Hmm. Well, we could start with the passenger lounge and just do some checking on registered passengers at the starport. Um, and sort of start start at the starport and, and work our way out. Yeah, um, I mean, I it's guess... going to be more of a, I think, like, rumors, right? We don't have a place, person to contact, do we, to, to find this We've guy? got nothing. We've got nothing. Um, okay. We've just got sort of like his code name. So it doesn't it doesn't give oh. away the fact is a, is a so we would use uh, um, Erg Newell uh, as our contacts as we uh, we 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 got a passenger yeah we got a passenger ticket for a mm -hmm. uh, uh, passenger who's going by the name of uh, Erg Newell. Yeah. Um, I think I think we could use that as a as a trigger, uh, and then it's going to basically obfuscate, you know, the fact that we're going for a some sort of Aslan military genius terrorist thing. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and we could start with the starport. Um, we could go to, um, well, any other institutions that look useful. Um, inevitably, mm -hmm. given the size of the place, we could try things like bars and other places where people might be there. Okay. So what do you... Um... Uh, what you find when you uh, walk up to sort of the, um, I, I guess, it, like there's not, you, are, are you thinking of, I'm trying to picture what, who it is you're trying to talk to. Like, is it a uh, kind of like general lost and found kind of thing or a place for, for connecting with passengers looking to travel off planet? It's, it's, it's the latter. It's very much the latter. And given that um, unless you actually book a circular, yeah, and out here there might not be many circulars. You kind of book an interest, and then if a ship comes, you can get off. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's kind of I'm assuming there might be a facility where people can register interest to okay. go off. I'm just, I'm just, I'm spitballing. I'm just. Yeah, yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah, we don't, we don't just want to put an announcement out, right? Yeah, no, I'm trying to avoid. That. Sure. So let's let's do this then. Um. Ask you guys, uh, why don't you give us a, we'll, we'll figure out what your result is. Dane, give us a, um, <laughs> I don't have the skill. <laughs> well, no, I, I think it's not necessarily persuasion, because uh, you're not trying to convince him to do anything, right? No, not at all. Is it, is it anchor, I, Let's do this. Why don't we have Anchor give us uh, an investigate, or do, are you trained in investigate, Dane? No. No, Okay. So why doesn't Anchor take the lead on it? Um, yeah, great. And we'll let you roll with a boon. Okay. On this to try and get the information and snoop through to see if there's any, you know. Booking boon. Yeah, and it kind of goes both ways too. Like sometimes it's people who are booking in to, to travel off and sometimes oh, okay. it's people who are, uh, that's a great one. Oof. Okay. So, Anchor, you go beyond. Uh, you know, you get the 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 list from. There's some helpful uh, uh, human person who's there, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm picturing that these folks have. There's probably some kind of like regional dialect that's that's built up. So they've all got a very um, kind of like uh, distinctive uh, or pronounced accent from. Whatever the imperial, what is it? Anglic? Is that the galactic? Galang, 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 Galang. Galang. Okay. Galang. Yeah. Galang. So it's definitely Galang. got a, like a a regional, um, mm. you know, version of it. You can interpret that in your mind however you choose. And what um, what they, you know, they as they're given the information, um, what uh, the person mentions to you. Uh, anchor is that uh, or mentions to Dane because maybe he's doing the talking is that uh, well these are the folks that have uh, have booked uh, or have registered for this too but uh, um, it doesn't include anyone who's been asking because you can also check in mm -hmm. mm. Mm. that's a good enough role that you could follow up if you choose yeah. Um, well, well, 
Where is like the booking site or where do people generally always oh, to... generally in person uh, they come down mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, they'll check with uh, they'll, they'll check with us and, and see what's uh, what's available and mm -hmm. um, if uh, and she kind of uh, leans in for whatever reason she's taken uh, a liking to you Dane and and perhaps to you as well anchor um, ah I can tell someone hasn't, uh, sometimes we have travelers who are a little more particular about the people they travel mm -hmm. with. And I mm -hmm. can tell you that, um, <clears throat> that little girl who's sitting in the corner over there, she's been checking in for available flights for someone else for about the last week or so, about the last two weeks. And, uh, if you'd like to try and be inconspicuous in your way of looking over you guys can each give us a is it stealth or is it recon there's a deception too by the way but i don't know oh yeah uh I'll yeah I, i'll buy either of those uh okay yeah there is stealth so um either stealth or deception I'll, uh, either of those you guys can roll okay pretty good guys uh, so what you can see is a young Aslan woman. Oh, good. Looks like this. Uh, she looks like she would be the equivalent of a, a teenage human uh, in as far as age is concerned. Has a uh, compad in front of her. There's a uh, you know in her hand a little. Um, a little uh, bag and she seems to be trying her damnedest to listen in on what you guys are talking about without actually uh appearing to do so she doesn't mm -hmm. seem to have noticed that both of you have fully clocked her okay i don't know who she uh maybe she's got a relative or something but uh she mm -hmm. doesn't seem to she seems particularly interested in uh, picking a flight for a, a particular traveler. Well, we, I suppose we can always see if we're the right ones for her, can't we? I guess. Yes. Oh, yeah. we can do that. So she looks over and uh, says, if, "If would you like to register uh, yourself for uh, for visitors?" Uh, when, if so, where is it? Your uh, I'm happy to, to set that up for you and start uh, working towards uh, getting you your, your vessel accommodates uh, um, passage. We're looking well. So we're on this particular run. We're focusing more actually on freight and mail. Um, I see for our for our run. However, we will consider without any doubt, any low passage requirements and interests, so we can register for the, for low passage. If you're looking at mid passage, we think on this occasion for this run, we're only looking for a mid passage for one passenger uh, on, on this occasion, on oh, this occasion. I see. So one pass, um, and, and where is it you're intended on headed? We're heading for Tech World. We're registered for uh -huh. Tech World run. All right. Um, and we're probably going to be a little bit picky about who we choose, much like the young lady is is particular about who uh, who she'll have. All right. Uh, is there so that you you want to ensure a, um, an in person uh, assessment uh, or in person confirmation before booking yeah, passage? That's right. Yeah, yeah. We don't. Uh, we, we can't just take anyone unfortunately on this particular run. Next time we're over, it might be different. I just put that down for you. And uh, all right then. And how many uh, low bursts will you have available? Oh, I wish again. I should have this. Was six, it six? Six. six rings a bell. Six low bursts. Good. And all right. We've got somebody working on the freight side, so that's fine. I have that uploaded. Um, I okay. have your uh, your vessel name, and uh, we will be. You should have received the confirmation message uh, by now. Okay, and thank you. Captain Ganny, while you're on the ship, there's a confirmation that uh, you've been registered to take on passengers. Sounds good. So do we want to talk to that? So, Dane, so. do we want to talk to that woman? I think so. This could shortcut it. Um, 
Ah, uh, right. So, um, casually walk not... by and mutter yeah. that name. I can even yeah. make it since it's an expression of, yeah. since a Barger expression, I can even just yeah. place his like and then say that in. word. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I like it. Okay. Yeah. So going forward with your further investigate role to uh, Varger, uh, you can see, like, um, uh, I, I, so one of the things I will say is that the design for the Aslan is remarkably inconsistent in the official traveler products. They have, some of them look like lion-headed men, some of them look like this, some of them look like humans that are just a little off from it. Um, so you know, for those listening at home, maybe they're subspecies uh, of, uh, if that's the canonical explanation. But what I do picture always is that they have those very expressive ears, like, right, because they've mm -hmm. got the big things. I think that she can't help but, you know, uh, peek forward and, uh, and and hear. Hmm. In which case, that's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is, well, because, like, so, I mean, I think some... I don't know if it's an art order issue or what, but like some art directors are, are asking for things that look like clearly cat people. In some cases, they're like aliens that have vague cat characteristics to it. And there's others where it's just full on lion head with whatever. Um, yeah. I, it's not a problem necessarily, because like who cares what they, they, they could be, be subspecies, but as you say, it's the, Kling, the Klingon plague. For myself, in my head canon, I, they're much closer to like what the Varger are, where they're like, it's cat people, it's whatever. Um, yes, although the, the art in the new Navy book for it is fucking awesome. And I excuse their more like alien with some vaguely cat characteristic uh, Aslan as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, but the Varger look amazing in that. They're almost identical to what uh, Carl's character picture is like. Super cool. Okay, um, then uh, what you so what you notice, uh, Anchor, and uh, your uh, deception and your stealth checks will carry forward. You don't notice. She seems. Uh, she hears it, and in that way that like teenagers kind of have difficulty containing what, their excitement. She sort of. Wait until, <laughs> wait until you guys are gone and you can see she then stuffs the uh um i think we'll let you guys like you know move your way into the there's not a crowd to lose yourself in but you get to a position where you're able to look back and um you oh sure yeah yeah go ahead go ahead uh dogs in distress that's never uh carl's got uh, a pup as well okay yeah yeah mm -hmm. and that's never like oh that dog should make that noise um, yeah. So, Dane, what you see then is, yeah, she seems to be quite eager. And if you, uh, with your stealth roll from before, you're able to get yourself in a enough of a position where you can yeah. see she seem you know stuffs her her uh, compad in a bag, and then she kind of hustles herself out of the uh, passenger area and off elsewhere, seemingly going towards the uh, one of the exits. I'm picturing that instead of like. Uh, the spaceport opening out into like an open area, it sort of opens into the mass transit kind of area where you're either able to hire on with one of the local small little things that takes you from settlement to, yeah. you know, like effectively neighborhood to neighborhood, or there's the, you know, underground trams or the equivalent thereof that would shoo, 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 kind of take you around. Yeah. Yeah, cool. So Okay, I mean, I think, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to make a big thing of it, but probably just... Um... I mean, she probably knows, therefore, what her route would be to get to us if she needed to. So that's yeah. why she's excited. Um, nevertheless, I'll perhaps, we, well, probably we will uh, make our way out anyway. We were planning to make our way out. So we'll, 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 we'll sort of track her over the main concourse area and sure. just see where she's going. So on um, over here, why don't you give us a, I think it's stealth. Yeah, I'm going to give yeah. you a, Boom. You know what I'll do is actually I'm gonna give a bane on her recon. Okay. Uh okay, rather than so I'll... yeah. All right. Okay. So yeah. Oh terrible. Uh you could spend hold on, it's um it's a one and a two. You need uh three. Uh do you remember where ties go to in this game? In opposed rules. Um, oh, opposed rules. I don't. Um, yeah, let me take is a look it here. the high skill? Is it? Yeah. Oh, uh, it could be the uh, high skill. Yeah, that might be. That's the way it works in uh, Warhammer. Um, but you know what? 
we play too many games. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah, I try and keep it like I'm like Warhammer. It's, it ties go to the opponents in. Um, like Twilight 2000 from yesterday, uh, the defenders subtract uh, successes, so ties go to the defenders. In the case of a draw, he says, quickly getting to the thing, the two opponents are locked into standstill with neither gaining an advantage. They may try again, or events may overtake them, rendering the opposed check. Meaningless. Yeah, so it, that, that, my, my, that answers my question for how much you need three luck to make it a free and clear success. Okay, uh, we need to track our luck. How much luck do we have? I think he has a five right now. Someone was entering it yeah yeah um should we do that or do you mm -hmm. want to save it for um trade oh I'll use it now okay but we we'll use three yeah we'll get to it all right so you're able to track her and uh you can see she actually is taking um uh the public transit uh, so there's a like a uh, underground uh, monorail type thing that would you know kind of take her off to some mm -hmm. not monorail <laughs> the underground a subway effectively that would take her yeah. uh, elsewhere in um, but and, and you could tell uh, quite clearly like kind of what district it would be taking her to so you might have a sense of what neighborhood even in the community that she's heading to now I mean in, in a way I don't think we we need to follow her um, I think she'll come to us. Uh, okay. It sounds like she'll come to us. And in fact, following her could spook her anyway. So okay. um, I kind of, I think I kind of think that's fine. We sort of kind of roughly know where she is. We know what she's doing. Let's await her call. Okay. Um, and let's make her the first port of call before we do anything else. So probably I'm going to just back away a little bit from okay. activities here and we'll just switch to getting the ship ready and get, getting the trade done and okay. see whether she comes through if she doesn't come through with quite what we're wanting then we'll need to double down on finding this person okay then what um what do you do next then He's heading back to the ship, uh, or are you going to focus on getting uh, trade? Well, no, I mean, I think I think we're here now. We might as well. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to rest easy and take it easy and stretch okay. my legs and do some socialising and cruise a couple of bars, see what see what's going on here. I mean, I'm not expecting I'm expecting it to be, you know, a working man's club maybe, but I, I just wanted to see what the local people are like. That's why we travel. Yeah, so. this is. Um... It's very much a place that is, um, other people are certainly welcome here, um, but it's not something that accommodates to travelers in any way. If you no, walk in, what fun. you're like, your walk, you, any pub you go into here would be, um, it would definitely be a local pub, right? It, it's not, it's full yeah. of locals. It's not something that's a, they're friendly, but no one's really try, making an effort to try and engage with you. If you try and hor you know, engage in, then it'll be a matter of um, you can make a persuasion check and see how that goes over. But yeah. it's not the kind of there's not a whole bunch of people who are coming and going from here the way there is in some of the other places you guys have been so far. So I'll keep it light. So I'll be talking to the, the person who served me the drink and just say, "Hey, how's it going? You know, how's yep. trade here? Looks sure. pretty good." Um, you know that kind of stuff, and just get just gently get an ambiance of how what what their lives are like. I'm not necessarily pumping them for too much information. Sure. It's just is there anything you specific know. you're trying to direct the conversation towards, or just? Uh... Um, I just suppose you know. Um, I guess maybe economics is just like you know with them operating independently somewhat you know just how they're finding it and and and, and ergo therefore how is trade for them because yeah they're feeding off. They're feeding off the uh, sort of free credits that people have. So yeah, things have been, you know, um, things are. They don't really give you an effusive description of uh, of what uh, life is like here, you know, per se. But uh, it's, you know, um, it is still a. Uh, um, there are settlements across the planet. What you find out that it, like the, uh, the the population on the planet itself is, I think it's close to 100,000 or a little over 100,000, uh, 30,000 of which or so live in the spaceport. The rest are spread across the planet in small uh, communities that are working promising deposits that the corporation deemed um, not uh, sufficient to, uh, to, you know, exploit on a large scale, but on a small scale thing. So there's lots of people coming and going from this, from uh, Herndon's claim, you know, to these other communities. Other than that, it's a mining town. 
Yeah, sure. And uh, as a as a as a sort of trader, sort of, sort of free trader, we're sort of always interested to know what sort of, you know, what kind of is the is the colony looking for? Is it's you know what what sort of things, you know, if we, if we were to get some cargo space, and we were happen to be passing, and, you know, I'm sure that that phrase will draw a smile from them. But if we happen to be passing, you know, kind of what sort of things, kind of almost be interested in what they don't have as opposed to what they do. What have. they don't they're, they're have. Actually, uh... Oh, um, any manufactured goods or any foodstuffs, you know? Got you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you, yeah. They sure the gestures outside, and you can see they're like, you know, any scene from any movie with Mars on it, yeah. you know, okay. it, it, it's um, uh, uh, edible things don't grow too well outside. So uh, and yeah. yeah, so that that is, I mean, we we make do, and then anything to accommodate that stuff. Um, there's we import a lot of our uh, mining. The, if you ask about the, you know, um, the government, what it is, it's it's a mix of it's a uh, it is a small uh, private corporation uh, with shareholders, some uh, most of which live on planet, some of which live elsewhere. Uh, and the reason that's important is because it means that people are invested; they own their own, you know, uh, activities here. This isn't a matter of uh, a megacorp coming in and and exploiting workers per se. It's locals who okay. own the company and exploit workers. It's a collective. Too. It's a collective, and they they kind of, yeah, definitely, okay. yeah. Um, you definitely don't right. get a uh, like. It's, it's not that the place is dirty or anything like that. It's just there are not. There's no frills to anything that you're finding here. Yeah, quite like it actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fine. It was. I, I think I know, I'm going to just keep it light like that. I think. Yeah. Um, and if, if that's what you keep it at, then you have a, a pleasant, you know, evening. They don't, they're not really looking for transformation. Yeah. yeah, I think Dane's just looking for some R and R, stretch his legs. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm in a new place. I'll find a little bit about it. I'll, I'll get a postcard. I'll come back. Okay. And uh, Captain Ganny, anything you wish to do while you're I'll on the ship? I'll still be. Yeah, I'm still using my 12 kilos of toolkit. I'm <laughs> finally getting some use out of it. <laughs> so how does the uh, main is is there a role that we have to make here um let's just let's, let's just check it out um Maybe. it's it's there's actually a cost there's a cost associated with it uh -oh. um um which i've already factored in but um one million credits <laughs> no, no, it, zero again. It, uh, i did look and i would worry but it's it's relatively light so usually we make um Two jumps, two full jumps per maintenance period, um, and for us that's about right. Okay, well, um, yeah. Right. Sorry, Sorry about that. that. Was weird. Looks like there's a wreck. Oh, that's okay. But, Everything okay? I don't know. It was making weird noises, but I didn't see another. I shine. I shone a flashlight up there, and I could see the um, the eyes of the creature staring back. Yeah. So I was like, I hope it's not, but it was, it's, I guess it's a raccoon that got up into the attic, but. Oh, shit. So, <laughs> so maybe it's, it's, it doesn't know how to get out, even though it got in. Yeah. So, so if we put water oh. near like a potential exit. Oh, so maybe nice. Come up there. It's, it's hot. Right? Yeah, it's that's really what I was going to say. Like, is it is avoiding the heat, just trying to find a place that's cool? Probably. I yeah. mean, it's still hot up there, but maybe not in the sun, right? So. Yeah, yeah. Holy shit. I thought you were joking halfway through. I'm like, is it a little lizard thing that you're talking to you find up there? No, it's, you could, I could hear it like screeching. So I guess it was stuck, but it seemed to have moved from where it was. So oh, okay. So now it's. I don't think it's stuck. Okay, good, good. Yeah, I, I thought it was, when you said it was an animal, so I thought it was um, uh, your pup. Because uh, that's. Just, oh, I, yeah, I wanted. I wanted to make because our our dogs have killed skunks before. Oh. So I wanted to make sure it wasn't a skunk yeah. out there that they were <laughs> they were worrying or something. Because <laughs> they yeah they've killed a couple. Well, the the new ones the huskies killed a couple skunks recently. Wow. So, you know, I had uh, a friend from work uh, who's got uh, she has three dogs and all three of them managed to get skunked, <laughs> got sprayed by a skunk a couple oh, of weeks back. She's like, I've never purchased so much tomato juice in one fucking yeah. city. Yeah. Oh, my God. Cool. All right. This is an ignorant question. Does the UK have skunks? No, no. It's North, North American animal. It's North American animal. OK, I thought so. It's yeah, not, that, so it's yeah. not an ignorant question. There we go. It's I had Africa. one in my backyard in Connecticut. No yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think what you get now is you might get a squirrel. I don't know. I mean, we, we we got we we don't have much that's very exciting in terms of uh, wildlife. <laughs> yeah. 
And we're plagued by North American squirrels as well. Yeah, yeah. The oh, gray they, ones. Uh, oh, really? They're invasive they... species kind of thing? Yep. They are. They're oh, beating wow. our to pulp. How did that happen? Yeah, who the fuck imported squirrels? Like, it's like rats on ships, right? Like, a squirrel would probably... Yeah, they must have just ended up that yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, we got uh, lots of. I, I got three different uh, species that uh, lurk around in my backyard: gray squirrels, black squirrels, and chipmunks. Hmm. All three of which keep Anna we active. Have, we have red squirrels. Oh, cool! Oh, freaky. Okay, then um, what? Uh, so, uh, what? What you, uh, Dane? We want to fill in uh, anchor for what you found. Yeah, so we we tracked the female Aslan to a sort of subway. Uh, mm -hmm. and she, was, she was routed out to a particular district. Um, so we kind of know roughly where she is. Our, I, I elected that we wouldn't we wouldn't chase sort of sort of shadow shadow her because we think that would just scare her off. Right. Um, and if if anything, that we probably she's, she's probably going to come to us. Um, yeah. So. We let her go, as it were, and we'll sort of see what happens. And maybe mm -hmm. what we'll do is we'll wait to see whether she comes up with with the goods. Um, if not, we can double down and try and find the um, contact another way. And instead, we kind of just decided just to sort of explore the town and stretch our legs. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, having been stuck on a ship for you know another week, it was just you know different places to see, different people to talk to, and it was all. I mean, I can't. I, I, um, Dane kept it fairly light. He just talked about the economics of the place and how people were doing and um, how they're finding the government and all that kind of stuff and mm -hmm. uh, probably lighter stuff about entertainment and what did they not have, um, which is largely manufactured goods and um, quality food stuffs. Um, so uh, that's about it, really. It was um, in a way. I'm trying not to create any waves. <laughs> because right. uh, really we need to keep a low profile okay this is true um, <laughs> and in terms of maintenance it's just a cost which i'll calculate yeah, not a roll um, okay it's just a cost and um we can apply that uh, maintenance cost to the expenditure line okay and um, then it is no a matter rolls. of rolls uh, oh sorry what was that no rolls. It's so no rolls. <laughs> uh, but we're turning our mind now to trade. So, uh, are you shooting for just freight traffic? Or are you doing some just speculative fun. trade or smuggling? Smuggling? Yeah. Okay, I'm smuggling. So, let's put the code down for Tech World. Uh, yeah. Do I have it here? No. Oh, it's on the map. Okay. Let's see, let's see. I for sure need glasses. Like, I, I've been fighting against it for a while. I'm like, oh, this the print in this, uh, what do you call it, in the uh, pocket edition of uh, Pathfinder. It's pretty small. Uh, but I think it's about time for me to get some spectacles. I have to say... When I spent two whole euros getting some at the supermarket, it was a great use of two euros. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's actually not bad. I should really just try out some of the, uh, you know, Shoppers Drug Mart uh, things. So yeah, there's... it's all that was needed. It made you, suddenly you're not squinting and all the rest of it. Yeah. Two uh, euros, I... cheap and cheerful. Yeah, that's uh, that's actually uh, next time I'm in Shoppers, I got to mail some stuff for you guys before I go on vacation. I'll uh, I'll I'll grab a pair of reading glasses and just see if it makes a difference. Uh, Cause I can like this stuff I can read fine, but like even the the little print on the on the map here, yeah, it takes a moment for my eyes to focus in and see what they actually <laughs> say. And it didn't used to do that. Uh, okay, so I guess what I'm saying is I failed one of my aging rolls in uh, oh. in traveler turns. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> All right, so what are we doing for uh, for freight then, guys? It'll be a broker uh, or streetwise check. Oh yeah, okay. This is—is is this Alonzo? Is this what Alonzo does? Uh, I think actually uh, Captain Ganny has broker. Is it? Is it Captain? Uh, Sorry, Captain. Yeah, I have broker. Yeah. Nice. So, uh, are you rolling on major or incidental cargo? Um, we could look at minor lots. 
Um, yeah. We haven't got a lot of space, so typically... Yeah, okay. yeah 49 tons, right? Agreed, we're pretty small. So. Um, it's 50, so it's 61 tons all in, isn't it? Was it? Oh, so minor, sorry, there's three. Uh, major cargo are 1D10, 1D6 times 10 tons of freight. Uh, minor cargo lots are 1D6 times 5, and incidental are 1D6. Uh, major okay. cargo have a dice modifier, incidental has a dice modifier, none for minor cargo. Okay, well, I mean, we could look to see what major, minor, and incidental lots are available. Okay. And because they can't be split up, they have to go all together, as in each lot has to go together. We can work out whether we've got a, a balance of lots that Oof. fills our Here's something space. that might factor in, guys. Um, because the tech oh. level of here and tech world are uh, nine or higher, that's a, already you're getting a plus four. Just from that, All right? There's, there's going to be a lot of freight. Yeah. yeah so, so the large one will plus, struggle because we'll need to roll a one. To... Uh, plus exactly. six. Um, I think you've got a plus six dice modifier. <laughs> then small, uh, medium it is then. No, no. That all that does is that generates a modifier on the number of lots that we get. Ah, okay. Yeah. Um, and then we roll. Not the size of the lots. Uh, no, the, this is acquiring. Is yeah, this is uh, to, to. Oh yeah, so okay. Let's. Yeah, you're, you're right. I'm, I'm putting the cart before the horse here. I'm getting too excited. Give us uh, <laughs> one, a three d six roll, uh, Dean. I'll take the first okay. one as major, second one as minor, third one as incidental. Okay. Okay, so there are thirty tons of. Wait, hold on. Am I doing this wrong? No, I'm doing this totally wrong here. Hold on. Big lots, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Okay. Hold on. Uh, let me add their own modifiers. Okay, so I'm a dummy. Uh, each of the lots, I, I'm confusing the size of the lots with the number of available ones. So let's take that first one as uh, ten. Man, there's tons. There oh, are no. <laughs> fifteen <laughs> major trouble. lots that are available. Hmm. Uh, the second one is seven, and I'm applying only the first two dice because it's two d six. Of course, if there are fifteen major lots, there's a good chance that we'll get one, which is just a roll of that one. That yeah, you want to yeah. it's the Goldilocks yeah. size. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, you have eleven minor lots, and uh, oh god, actually, it's so a six, ten, and seventeen. Incidental lot. So basically, like, you're going to have certainly more than enough to make up what you need here. I think um, so, yeah. You have 59 tons of space. There is at least one 50 ton major cargo available. We've got two tons worth of mail. Um, we can probably get an incidental. Uh, you have 10 tons worth of mail. Each mail is, is 10 oh, tons each. Oh, I probably, it is 10 tons. You're oh, quite right. right. So you Thank have 49 you. tons available. 49 wow. tons. Okay. Yeah. Well, let me just do this. You have, I think, in amongst, yeah, you're going to be able to figure that in amongst the whatever it was, 15 lots, you're probably going to be able to find one that is 40 tons on the nose. Okay. That's okay. Fine. We'll just take that. So then, but, well, then we get to make uh, Captain Gani, which give us a broker roll with. Um, Plus uh, six. Broker roll plus six. Remember, don't put the plus sign in. Oh, plus. I got to put plus. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, the world will implode. <laughs> Sorry, I should put the plus or not? You should not put the plus. Never put, put the plus. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The plus <laughs> sign should, should never go in and roll 20 yeah, ever. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> Look at that. Whoa. All right. So, um, why don't you tell us? And I imagine because you're having to sit in the ship, I think I mean, this is being done over like a video call kind of thing. Yeah, I'm doing this on the uh, on um, the space Amazon. I think I'm busy working through to communicating with each of the brokers. There's going to be all the screens up. It's just yeah, like yeah. your big trading thing. It's like Eve Online. That's just me doing my stuff. <laughs> nice. So that is an extraordinary job of that. You are definitely, you've secured 40 tons of major cargo and um, the incidental lots are D6. Let's assume that you've got enough for two, give us two more rolls for uh, incidental lots. 
see if you can fill up your right to the brim. With six again? Uh, with a six modifier, yeah. Again. Right, full Incredible. You know, I'm going to look at the... Hmm. Very cool. I'm going to look at the um, uh, trader or merchant uh, source book for set first edition mongoose. I've got that in my shop, and I, I wonder if there's more ways to make this kind of process more interesting or more role-playing heavy. Uh, so, yeah, amazing. Uh, Captain Ganny, you are absolutely in your element. Uh, Tech World is a very popular destination for uh, for goods from here, so you guys can fill the rest of your cargo hold up with the um, the rest of the stuff. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, with freight. That's forty nine k. Because it's, it's a one it's a one pass set run. Yeah, yeah. and your um, um, uh, then you also get your what fifty grand uh, in credits from your mail. Yeah. Uh, so that, that that's kind of that's kind of still sitting in there, and so it's just now the low passage. If we can get the low passage in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you will be able to get the low passage uh, customers, but. what you receive um whose contact information did you leave with the booking agent for uh for booking contact or passage to uh to, to tech world with one person that you could meet with and and whatever um like i'm wondering uh, who would be managing that uh uh stuff you could set it up to, to to like have a distribution list so it goes to all of you guys if you like that's probably a yeah. good idea. Yeah. I mean, normally yeah. it would be, uh, it'd be Alonzo. Alonzo, I think. Yeah. yeah. And so let's yeah. say it goes in and then it distributes. So all of you, uh, you can picture wherever you are on the ship as as you're sort of arranging this stuff and loading things up. Each of your comm units gets a me uh, a message that has been distributed, um, and it is from a obscured uh, address, or at least it doesn't. Uh, it's like a uh, the traveler email equivalent of a you know hidden number or a block number or not block but a, an obscured number and what it simply says is passage off world question mark we should meet oh. can i just tell you that for each low passenger our income is 700 credits just bear that in mind. So for the full six berths in, we're talking, I mean, I'm just talking the money here, but it's it's 4,200. So it's, I mean, yeah, it's, it's small beer. Um, <laughs> um, we can still do it. And it will, you know, it'll, I mean, it, the low berth income will pay for our maintenance. So it's not, it's not, you know, it's, it's okay. But, um, You're not getting rich on that. No, no. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm, I don't care. <laughs> so each of, uh, this arrives to each of you. There is a way of responding to while the the um, pass it is sent anonymously. Like there, you could send messages back to this. Sure. So mm -hmm. as we can picture that maybe like wherever you guys are, maybe you know Dane is helping to load cargo. Uh, Anchor might be, yeah. you know, uh, or maybe Anchor's assisting with that. Captain Ganny is finishing up the uh, double checking that the maintenance was sufficient. <laughs> this message shows up. And you guys can all kind of go on to a group call with one another. Let's do that. Okay. All right. Well, maybe this is them. Let's hope. Are you guys planning on doing anything or? <laughs> no, well, just, no I, well, I mean, we just make contact. I mean, or say yes. Yeah. And they want to meet. What could possibly go wrong? So, Try. who replies? Um, the captain or Dane or I or we. Yeah, I can do it. I can do it. So I'll take a take a call while I'm sticking cargo lots into base lots in the thing yep hi you 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 you, you called us you, you're wanting low passage it, right it is a um it's the equivalent oh. of like email it's, it's okay yeah yeah it's not uh, there isn't a, a contact um it isn't a, like a voice message that's been left 
I'll just send uh, our standard um, low passage disclaimer and say, if you're interested, please uh, let us know what your circumstances are and any special requirements, question mark. Okay. Um, it sends a message. Uh, you get a message back shortly thereafter uh, that says, uh, you are, uh, says no, simply it says, uh, no low passage. You are looking for a single middle passage and question mark. And then it's, it's signed at the, uh, at the bottom. Eric Noyle. Hmm. Oh, okay. Mm. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to take that on trust and just say, um, just reply and say, correct. He sent uh, whatever the messenger, uh, whatever it's coming from, a message comes back with a link to a, the, you know, website of a local business called uh, Hernan Robotics and Electronics. It's kind of the local equivalent of, you know, Google Maps. And uh, <sighs> it simply says noon. It's got to be done. It's got to be done. Okay. Noon it is. High noon, perhaps. All right. Okay. Then, with that, guys, we'll bring our session to a close. So... Uh, for those listening at home, thank you so much for joining us for part nine of our Borderland Run uh, campaign. Uh, as is always the case, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns regarding the session, the campaign, or the game we're playing, please don't hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section down below, and I'll endeavor to reply in a timely fashion. Uh, I will say that um, f next session for this would be scheduled for july 16th uh but i will be on vacation uh then so uh we will not be uh, uh playing a game then our next session to this would be i guess july 30th is that right wow well, yeah okay. um so um but if, so if we do not if we're not back next time that that's only because i am on vacation i'm resting up and planning i do plan on bringing all of my traveler books with me because i got a lot of books to get caught up on and i will be relaxing in the sun and reading some travel or getting ready for our the next stage of our campaign. Um, by which I mean, you know, when the um, Villani invade uh, in the... Uh, no. uh, so uh, also, there's also a link down below in the description of the video to the uh, Dungeon Musings Discord server. You are more than welcome to join us over there. We have channels there dedicated to... Uh, I don't think we have one for Traveler yet. Um, but there is one uh, channels there dedicated to most of the games we run on the channel, as well as uh, a ton of other great channels like finding a group or information about virtual tabletops or a GM discussion in general. It's a great community that's built up over there over the past few years, and you are more than welcome to join us over there. Um, there is also a link down below to our friends at Noble Knight Games. Noble Knight Games is the preeminent unionized retailer of hard-to-find and out-of-print RPGs in North America. Not only do they have a terrific selection of new board games, card games, and role-playing games, they also have an unmatched selection of hard-to-find and out-of-print RPGs, including a lot of great uh, traveler stuff. I, I filled uh, part of my traveler connection collection for first edition books from them. Um, there is also, uh, so normally we have a, a discount code that's listed down there. Uh, the current one is has expired as of July 1st and I have not yet, I'll, this afternoon I'll be um, writing them and we'll get a new discount code. So if you uh, make a purchase of $10 or more through their website, check one of our more recent videos and you will find a discount code that will allow you to save 10% on your purchase. Um, there's also a link down below to something called Heroes Save Villages. That is the charity fundraising campaign we run on the channel. It benefits the SOS Children's Villages International uh, Charity, a really amazing organization active in over 130 countries, benefiting over 80,000 orphaned and abandoned children, including ongoing relief efforts in Ukraine and the surrounding countries at the time of recording. Um, there is, uh, all, I guess uh, for one thing, uh, all donations that go through that link go directly to SOS Children's Villages International. None of it goes to the channel or any other middleman and just goes to help out the kids who benefit from their services. And as a small way of saying thank you, if you donate $10 or more since June 1st, you will be able to vote on all aspects of the last three charity sessions we have this year. These include uh, uh, we have one at the end of July, one at the end of uh, September, and one at the end of November. There is... 
uh, currently ongoing voting for the next charity session that will be the era and the time period uh, or the era and the uh, location for, for where we'll be playing and we have an early start to the voting on that with a uh, vote for the Cold War era uh, so that looks pretty fun I like me some spy stuff um, there, in addition, uh, if you donate $25 or more, you'll be eligible to, uh, to win one of the great prizes in our next charity raffle, which will be at the end of December. Um, the, again, all donations go through that, uh, go through that link, go directly to SOS Children's Villages International. If you want to find more information about the charity sessions, uh, then head on over to the Dungeon Musing Discord server's charity initiatives channel, and you'll find information there about the um, ongoing voting and the next charity session. Last thing I will say is an enormous thank you to our stalwart travelers. So James, Graham, and Carl, thank you so much for joining me back today, guys. This was a really fun session. Uh, I, this campaign it has reminded me just how much I enjoy running this game. Uh, it, uh, it was We had set this one aside for like three years uh, before getting back to it, and this has been just a shit ton of fun. So thank you, guys. Um, then, for those listening at home, we will be back again. I will be on vacation at the time when this next session will be played, but I will be back afterwards, and uh, we will be uh, playing... Oh, wait, is the 30th the weekend? When's the gaming marathon? Gosh. Hmm. Let me double-check. I, I thought it was after that. Uh, 28th to the 30th is the gaming marathon. So, our next session of this will be sometime in uh, August, I guess. Uh, but in any event, we will be back in um, uh, on Hernan's uh, claim. Uh, but until then, we hope that we gave you a few hours to take your mind off of the troubles of our world and think about the troubles that our travelers are encountering as they're gadabouting uh, in the inuring system and the borderland sector in general. Uh, until we see you again, stay safe, stay healthy, and happy